Uh, I don't know how much people does actually know one of or face it one of these CMS during their don't know bids or RFPs or whatever Adobe or Oracle or Sitecore and how much you won against them or they won you won all the time no yeah you won like good well the, the this is well, we're going to talk about mainly the competition the real competition of Drupal today and try to get some well, tips or ideas to win against them actually probably you know us I wrote its largest Drupal shop. I'm not sure. Maybe Wonder Crow is larger. Who knows? Uh, nobody knows actually. Uh, so, who they are? Yesterday, the competition of Drupal was like this: kind of typo free fighting who is the best open source CMS in the world, WordPress, Joomla, Jaya, or many others. Uh, actually, this is what we was facing five years ago. Um, when we go to RFPs, it was always, oh, I select type of free or I, I prefer WordPress. Okay. Nowadays, it's a little bit changed. The background of, um, of Drupal starts to be much more uh, competitive with big organizations, Ektron, Adobe, Oracle, and Sitecore. There's a couple of others uh, in the Gartner matrix, but actually those four are the, uh, the ones we face all the day in our bids. So... I know that Actron is not so present in, in the Europe. It's mainly a .NET US product. Adobe is, a, for us, the, 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 the highest competition, the most complicated to fight product. Oracle Sites, Fatwire, for ones who know, and Sitecore. Well, Oracle and Adobe, for us, are the, are the most complicated competitors. So, but the question may, you may ask why we should sell Drupal. Actually, we have the largest open source community. We have uh, so many people here, and everybody knows Drupal. It's open source. It's free. Why should we sell it? Um, well, let's see just some simple example. Imagine you are uh, answering to an RFP, and then you propose Drupal. What happens on the other side? The guy actually will see uh, the marketing chief officer, ma chief marketing officer, or um, the chief IT director, digital IT director, will check out what Drupal looks like, probably, somehow, if he never used it before. And we got this. Five minutes on Google, and you have this demo site. Well, okay, but he's a smart guy. He knows that it's open source, so he then gets... I have, he has probably some couple of guys in big organization, they all have all has friends running Drupal sites. So he will call them or, or check out how it works in other places. So he, let's say he's Joe, uh, calls his Joe and, well, how do you create pages on your Drupal site, how it looks like? And Joe opens him in access to his dashboard and look, well, I have a dashboard and I see my articles and it's pretty cool. And then I can go and edit them with my, my my interface, oh, it's okay, it's pretty cool. And well, let's call Mike then, like Mike is an imaginary friend, and how he managed content. And Mike runs not a media website, but a more standard, I don't know, um, in, um, corporate website. And he has this, ah, I navigate the site and I edit pages directly. Yeah, using in drag and drop. Yeah, like direct look at my screen, I drag and drop my pens there. You say, okay, quite different approach. And then, he calls his last friend, Mary, who runs the internet, Drupal internet, and uh, he got this. Like, look, I have this interface for Drupal. So the problem, as you may see, all this is good, but there is absolutely no one Drupal installation. There is no standards, no integration. Every single Drupal website will be quite different from another. Some of them you will use standard Drupal interface with Gallant theme. I don't know if somebody uses still Gallant theme, but maybe. Uh, some of them will probably... Um, create an administration theme completely from a different. So the problem, there is no real way to discover Drupal. What is Drupal? How it works? So you need to sell it. Because while you do not sell it, uh, the others, they do. Ektron, five seconds on the internet on Google, you get this. Drag and drop, everything is clear. They, uh, they explain every single, you have URL aliasing, inline editing. But you say, Drupal does all this. Yes, but they sell it. Uh, if you want the, the same demonstration with Drupal, you have to go to uh, Path Auto model, you have to go to Panels model, you have to go to Admin Menu, Amber theme, maybe Amber or another. This is a problem. Adobe, it's even worse. 
You go on their website, they have hundreds, thousands of hours of videos. They got pretty cool guy explaining you how it's easy to manage your website. Look, you can drag and drop, you have your assets, you have your sites, you have a very cool back office interface. Everything is clean and working and integrated. So actually what the competition have, they have the demo effect. When they arrive on the RFP, especially with Adobe Teams, they usually grab the website, the current website of, uh, of the client and say, look, this is your website, let's edit it. And they edit it, start edit it with inline editing. So they have this demo effect. They have, of course, the sales team. They have a dedicated sales team. We are all spread in Drupal shops and different Drupal shops. They have a centralized editor um, sales team. Also, it's quite easy. The largest Drupal shop, well, Wondercrot, us, I don't know who, they are like 100, 200 people, maybe 300 people in Brazil. Uh, Oracle, Adobe, they are much bigger, so they will not fail. They have integrated solution. This is a big, big problem. If you see Adobe, Adobe, they integrate. They have standard back office interface for creating websites, managing websites, managing personas, targeting, analytics, um, whatever. And they have a very industrialized sales process. You receive some RFP, some other receive than others, but there is no channel organized sales process. Who do you call to have a Drupal website? Well, Acquia probably starts to doing. Uh, but again, uh, you have to find, you call your friends. There is no industrialized sales process. And of course, they have very strong marketing efforts. If today we go to Drupal.org, there is no demo, there is no videos. Well, they are on Drupalize Me. They had some Drupal shops creating very nice tutorials, but nothing centralized. So what we would need right now, and I've talked yesterday with Joanna from Drupal Association. It's really something we really need. We need hosted demos per industry. So, for instance, we will start uh, by the end of this year, we'll provide some demos, um, integrated demos of Drupal per industry. So we'll have one retail, one for e-commerce, one for uh, media publishing websites. We have standard solution. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Standard solution are really important because there are many ways to do same things in Drupal. We need integrated solution too, and we'll see how, and we need uh, Drupal.org marketing resources hosted. So, well, maybe we can, we'll talk with John after. If everybody can talk to Drupal Association, I'll turn to that, it will be cool. Um, so let me go, but then how market? But imagine you, you receive the RFP and how you will market this um, Drupal thing. Um, but let's start with a small story. Um, actually, I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore, that gave me some authorization to talk about two very important things, the communist and the capitalist. Don't worry, you can not live right now. Wait until the end, please. So let's start a little bit. Capitalism for dummies, you have customers, they have needs, and then they go to the shop, who buys for big industry to get the new needs. Everybody is happy, okay. Then how the communists work. Actually, they have one smart guy, the analyst in Moscow, deciding where he needs to set up the factories, what kind of and how much decap sized bra they need to produce for the entire country for five next years. This leads to unhappy customers, because some of them not uh, fit the size. And in Omsk, there is no sea and no need for anchors. So you get the point, actually. I see that. Ectron, Adobe, Oracle, they are kind of communist. Why? Because there are the smart guys who are deciding what kind of feature they have to implement in this roadmap. So there is a guy somewhere in the United States sitting there and asking, ah, oh, let's do comments in the next CQ6 or CQ5 release. Okay, so there are a bunch of guys working on these uh, comments and releasing in one, one year. This is bullshit because on Drupal side, there is a needs. There are many, many models popping out from the community, and then one of them gets selected by Darwin, the natural selection. So they can never compete in terms of time to market of new features. If you have a new um, social network getting out, it will be ready probably in some release, but in one year, six months, three months. They can also say you that they can develop it. 
but the problem is that uh, you will pay for that, uh, and everybody will pay for that. So there is a big value, big big value losing. Big money is lost in in, in doing the same uh, thing all the time. So how can we pitch there? No editor can compete with the community, the number of developers we have there. We have the largest community, the open source in the world. We have the latest features always available. It's amazing. As soon as you have Elo, there is Elo social network. I can bet that in one month we'll have Elo Connect and Elo integration. So we don't need to wait a roadmap. And we have 26,000 models already there. This is kind of important to say in, and explain to the clients, like, look, this is the real reality of Drupal. Then one, one objection we see all the time is uh, Drupal is less secure as it's open source, which actually it's really not true. Drupal have a, a very um, proactive uh, security team. We launched, uh, yesterday we launched uh, Drupal 8 hack challenge, uh, and some guy actually uh, managed to hack it, but after we deactivated brute force in Finland. So actually nobody, there was about 250 different IP, unique IP, trying to hack Drupal 8 beta, and nobody succeeded to do it. You have millions of eyes on the code of Drupal besides the um, um, dedicated security team. So, and also we are, the community are eager to communicate on holes and security uh, exploits very often. Rather, if you are Adobe, you will not say, hey guys, we have a security issue. Uh, if I have a problem, I have no support. This is classical. Uh, I'm a small Drupal shop. I, uh, I go with a big account. They will say, but there is no support. What happens if you fail? Um, well, actually, you have, um, today I have to say that you have Acquia. Uh, well, they, they, are, they have a big bunch of money. Uh, we see it by the number of guys from Acquia here. Uh, and they provide, actually, 24-hour support. So, well, you can say, like, look, if you are really scared to work with me, you have Acquia. Um, there is no clear roadmap, but actually, uh, yes, that's true. There is no roadmap in Drupal. You never know what kind of features will, uh, will come. But what we noticed is that you don't really need a roadmap here because you have this modularity. So you, the models, will, the features will appear as soon as you need the market needs. So the roadmap is bad, actually. You have to try to explain to your clients that the roadmap is, is bad because they'll have to wait for the roadmap. Um, Another thing we, we always see is Drupal is hard to integrate to my internal system, especially with Oracle guys. They have Oracle database, Oracle authentication, Oracle digital asset management, Oracle, Oracle, Oracle. And then you try to put small Drupal there. And they say, but it will be complicated. Actually, it's not complicated. Everything uh, on Oracle or even Adobe, they provide API, all the... All the ERP, CRM, whatever IS systems you have, uh, they all have API SOAP-based XML, RPC, whatever files. We have services module, we have feeds, we have migrate, and we have in numerous examples of large organizations, large sites connected to everything. Look, this is very common. We have this experience, SagePay, Count, Giraffe, Logistics, SAP, and it all works now. So you can just send examples of big uh, transactional platforms. One another example, PHP is slow. All the rest are O.NET or Java, which actually is true. PHP is slow. Drupal is kind of slow. But you have, you have a lot of things on top of Drupal. You don't install only Drupal. You have Varnish. You have internal cache with Memcache. You have probably, you can also set up some MongoDB storage if necessary. And you have many examples of, of very fast and, and high traffic website. Al Jazeera is an example. Freerise, they get 20 million page view per day. So those arguments are not real. Um, content authoring. So this is actually the guys you're selling CMS, so you sell content authoring. Many, the rest is just package. But at the end, the guys who create content, how does it work? There's, there's very big difference between Drupal and uh, the rest. Drupal is a kind of standard. We have entities, we have fields, we have values, we have field API, we have, it's based on the, uh, MySQL or what else, database, classical uh, relationship database system. So usually when you create content, you say, what is my content? You create your content types and how I show my content, and then you create your page, your templates, and the rest. In Adobe CQ5, uh, now it's Adobe Experience manage Management, is a totally different approach to the, uh, to the content structure. They are based on 
Jackrabbit content repository. So who knows Jackrabbit? GCR? Wow, cool. So Jackrabbit, actually they contribute open source. Jackrabbit is open source and they create a commercial product named CRX. So it's a tree, basically. Uh, Jackrabbit content repository, it's a tree of content. So they don't, it's kind of a mix between a database and the file storage, so they can put in structured content. This is a really powerful system. I must confess, many times it's very powerful, it's very simple, because they can manage and structure content. This is really pain in the ass in Drupal. You have like, look, I have this small page with one image here, title here, and three blocks, and then I have totally different design. Do I create a content type for that? Do I go with panels? And there is no like seamless uh, way to create and structure content in Drupal. You can have many options, but they will be all different. Another thing they achieve it pretty good because of this uh, XPath-like uh, content repository is front-end editing. This is a demo effect. Uh, Drupal start to do because Acquia acquired a lot of guys from Adobe. So they created Spark initiative, and this is a front-end editing is, is very important for Dries, and it's true. They have it still better, but we need to in, in, really to try to work on this front-end editing thing because this is a demo effect. They arrive on your RFP process and you say, look, this is your website, I can edit it directly. And of course, because it's a repository, it's, the content staging is much easier. They can just copy the content. I know that in Drupal 8 it's maybe different, you can use U UIDs, but still we are in database and they copy files almost. Um, oh, sorry. Um, the thing they do, the, the content repository is okay for unstructured content, but then there are problems, of course. Because you have this tree structure, you have to put your content always in some, some tree. So as soon as you start to talk about aggregated content, orders, invoices, uh, everything which is transactional, it's very complicated. It's slow and it's not so easy to create real uh, aggregated content with, like we do with joints and, and, and stuff. And also they have re uh, difficulties to create because of the same problem, user-generated content. Where do you put your content? On user nodes, or lists, or where, where do you put the content? Um, also, uh, it comes uh, uh, true that we need some consistency across our sites because uh, you cannot, uh, you have content types in Drupal. In Adobe CQ5, it's unstructured, so you cannot really have a, a structure. They actually have uh, scaffolding. It's our content type things. So you create forms to create content of certain type. It's kind of the same that we have. So, but look, this is the explanation of how to create a, con a structured content of, copy-paste from their website. Okay, so I will let you read it and I'll go back. No, it's, it's kind of a looks like we need that, we will add that on top of our uh, content repository. So their publishing system is also interesting. They have authoring and they have publishing system and dispatches like our varnish. So they separate strongly the back office and the front office. So they, they in, this is again from their side. Authors generate content and visitor post comments. Okay, but what happens if visitors generate content? Do they go to the author comp or do you have to create everything? Actually, it doesn't work really well. So if your site on your RFP, they have a lot of interaction with users or you want to, ha or you want to have a front-end editing of, uh, of your content, it will be much more complicated for them because they have to go to dispatch and then send back. Well, it's not so easy. So in terms of, of content operating, they cannot customize the back office. They have an integrated, beautiful back office, but it's still a back office. They have a quite limited support of user-generated content. They have uh, uh, comments, they have forums, they have blogs, but again, it's all in the roadmap. It's kind of fixed and you have to develop everything. If you want something specific, you have to develop everything by yourself. And they have a kind of complicated system. You have to store your aggregated content in the database, so you will mix your GCR and your, and your database. Second point, imagine you have a commerce RFP. On commerce you have, uh, well, in Adobe it's quite easy. They fucked up the buy of Ibris. Ibris was acquired by SAP, cool. Because if Adobe acquired Ibris, that would be a pain in the ass. They don't have, they don't have only con uh, connectors and they have only intended for demonstration purpose only commerce, so that's good. 
Ectron has a kind of a basic support of commerce, but look, really it looks very perfectly UI, UX, nice, beautiful. So you, you not have to be feared of uh, Ectron. Actually, the real uh, competition for uh, Drupal commerce is Demonware, Oracle, Hybris, and Magento. So I would say we, we got this discussion like a month ago with a big RFP on commerce. So the good thing for you is kill the Adobe WCM vendors with commerce because they don't have it and kill the commerce vendors with Drupal CMS because all the Ibris, uh, ATG, uh, Demandware, and Magento, they don't have CMS components. So Drupal mix the two, so just push on it. And you have a lot of already big brands using commerce today. You have Cartier, you have Royal Mail, Eurostar. They are all shown on uh, commerce guys, uh, uh, like I would say gallery of art, I would say, because they have. Um, ARL is from Holland using Drupal, five, uh, 50 millions of euro of revenue going on Drupal commerce. It's a big lush. So your Drupal pitch for Drupal would be a fully integrated commerce suite. You have a flexible OMS and PIM. This is important. Many guys say me on RFP, but does Drupal do PIM because I, we, we could integrate with external PIM? Drupal is a very powerful PIM. You have workflow, you have translation engine, you can manage images, you can manage everything. You have a PIM inside Drupal. You can sell it perfectly. Uh, you, have, you have revisioning, you have everything. So you, it's a real good PIM. You have an uh, order management system. It's very flexible. You can manage it in any way. Mult natively multi-country, multilingual with domains, model, and, and multi-country system. You have a powerful promotion design with rules. It's not very beautiful, but you didn't see the ones from Ibris and Demonware. They're not so beautiful, too. And it's socially enabled. You can create things with Facebook, whatever. Integration. This is, for me, the main Drupal problem. As I said at the beginning, our main competition is Adam Marketing Cloud. They have everything integrated. They buy many companies. It's not they didn't develop everything, but it's all in the same interface. The marketing director sees the statistics, the target, the analytics, the CMS, everything is in the one interface, seamless, nice, beautiful back office. We have this, we kind of, we have several uh, social, yes, we have organic group, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. We have, for analytics, we have uh, several uh, uh, models. For targeting, we have, we have to integrate with external systems like Aqua Lift, Qubit, VW, context panels, whatever. So there is no clear solution. We have no clear UI, and we have a lot of uh, third-party tools. This is our big problem. So we hope that uh, in, in, in future months and years or whatever, we'll get something to, to solve those problems, especially targeting in analytics, because this is the two main problems we don't have. The rest we have. Social, it's okay, but analytics and target, we don't have. Another problem, this is was from the beginning of the presentation. This is like typical Drupal project looks like. Before you even start coding or thinking about what you have to do, you have to install views, VBO panels, workbench features, admin menu, and blah, blah, blah. All these models are always, almost always present in your uh, Drupal installation. We actually have distribution partially solve this issue, but we still have a big standards problem. We don't have a standard solution for standard needs. This is a big problem. How do you manage your homepage on it? So look, look, a simple web page like that. How do you manage it, the content? Do you have a, somebody have good ideas of how to manage this using Drupal? No? You've never did Drupal websites before? <laughs> ah, okay, good. Anyway, so we have dot queues. You can push your content in dot queues. You can create a content type for the home page. You can create views with draggable views. You can use solar with views. You can use panels. There is a many, many ways to create. And when you go from one site to another, from one company to another, it's all different based on the vendors. So how can we sell it? Well, we have the flexibility, blah, blah. OK, the most important, you can shape your project like Lego. So OK, we don't have integrated solution, but we can create a solution just right for your needs. And the, you don't have to adapt to the back office of Adobe or the, the way of Adobe works. We can set up your website, your Drupal installation, adapt it to your needs. And you also have to push on TCO, total cost of ownership. We'll talk about it a little bit later. So what we need right now is a one kickstart standard distribution. I know there are some work started with beer, panoply, or whatever. 
we need a unified UI. This is something we, we need UI, not admin theme. This is something we really need to work on, and I know that there will be a lot of works done this year in our, for, for our demonstration. We'll release it open source. And we need standard solution. Why do we need uh, hundreds of ways to create a homepage? After all, this is a fucking homepage. Uh, probably we need something. Actually, you have some starting good. You, you have to start. You have the demo framework. It's actually a little bit buggy, so you can uh, harass uh, Acquire guys to, to correct the bugs right now. But Lightning is quite well. We, we, we did a lot of demo, wow effect demo against Sidecore with using Lightning. It's quite okay. Panoply, it's very nice for moving your blocks and drag and drop. And you have beer, it's kind of uh, startup uh, distribution. So you can use this to, to demonstrate Drupal. Uh, one, have, uh, one thing we have uh, also is uh, social, um, social things. So well, social Drupal blasts uh, out all the rest because it's actually based on social thing. The social thing goes very fast. So this is, I take again on the left, social key features from Adobe. They, they present this. I didn't select them. So you have scoring and badging. We have them on the Karma user point. We have tagging. We have activity streams. Actually, at the, at the end, everything is much more flexible because you can uh, hash and slash all your features as you wish. The same for uh, blogs, forums, private messaging, comments. But you also have chats. You have hundreds of social networks all around the world integrated with Drupal. So this is really important. Um, and again, this is the main thing that editor will be stuck with social uh, features in their roadmap because it's changed too fast. You have uh, Baidu, tomorrow we will have another, Elo, Secret, Whisper, whatever, uh, Yo, <laughs> maybe you will have some integration with Yo. Well, all this is good. At the end, we all know that the client, what he looks at the end is the cost of their project. So. Nothing better to ask. I asked some Adobe guys to come. They kindly refused. Uh, but uh, their marketing effort helped us because we have this uh, uh, very nice video from their Adobe Experience Manager last conference. So open your ears. Oh. And we need your help to do that. As Bill said, last year we grew 70% in license. The average deal size on an Adobe Experience Manager deal is 450,000. The services on top of that, you saw that graph. It's at least four, three to four X, and over the lifetime, much more than that. Thank you. So average Adobe W Experience Manager is $2 million with a 450 case for licenses. So you gave half a million of dollars to Adobe just to use their integrated solution. How much money you could save and use it for your project? Keep the money in the project. You have a classical 100 whatever budget. You have strategy design, implementation, testing, software licenses, and annual SNF of license. Don't use that and move it to whatever, implementation or whatever. There is another uh, one small thing, but well, it's, it's not really fair, but I have to talk about it. The average uh, salary taken from salary.com is 55K for a PHP developer, 80K for a Java. Good to know. Well, at salary.com, I know that it strongly depends on location, on country, or whatever. We are in Europe, we have prices goes from 20 to, to, to 200, but okay. Uh, yes, also another thing we have to talk about is that editor support is not that easy. Actually, this is a classical uh, ping pong thing. You have the hosting, host uh, Adobe is not so easy. You have integrator support, the guy who actually does your uh, website, and they have editor support. In case of a real problem, there will be up and down. Uh, it's not my fault, the ticket is on, is on side of the integrator, they did a bad job. No, it's an editor bug. So the idea here, in, in Drupal, usually you remove the editor support and you have like hosting and integrator support. So you remove one components. Also, what's important, well, actually we have obviously lower TCO. Um, so they pay, actually what they pay for is for services, for added value and not for licenses. So there is not a rental company. You don't have a vendor lock-in. Once you go with Adobe, complicated to get out. 
and you have your integrators have a better understanding of the product. Many integrators of Adobe, they can create themes, they can create, they know what they know about what is possible to create on Adobe. They don't know how the Adobe inside CQ5 works really. All the Drupal shops know how Drupal works. This is a big asset. So if they have problems, they, have opti they can optimize sites. You have Aqua as support. That's true. They, they can help any, any, at any time. And it's much easier to host. Well, actually, I think I finished. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, if you have questions. Yes. A very nice presentation. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to, uh, um, I think when the Drupal community is lo looking a lot uh, at at Adobe and what they're doing and competing with them, but I think it's very important that um, I think it's very important that we also um, look at what the customer, what the customers need. Because I think uh, companies like Adobe are better understanding that at this moment, for some part, um, what the real business needs are um, of real enterprises, like for example, good media management, asset management, these yeah. kind of things. And it's very important, I think, that we do not only look at what Adobe is doing, because then we're only going to um, walk behind them. And, uh, but I think it's important that we look at what the market needs and not only focus on technical parts of, um, of the solution and the product, but also the real needs of the consumer <laughs> and how we can address it. So um, I'm not sure. Uh, if it was a question, <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 can, I can try to. <laughs> to um, but um, um, what's your experience with that and, and with your customers? Um, do they ask questions about what about these features and how does uh, Drupal community um, is addressing that? Well, actually, yes, they ask about features, obviously, and about when the Drupal 8 will be ready. This is the two main questions. But, uh, yeah, uh, what we face every day in our bids is to try to demonstrate how Drupal is actually already better or does what they need. The only problem we face right now, we have much more features, I think, uh, than uh, the competition out of analytics and targeting, because this is something is not really addressed by, by open source and by Drupal community yet. But in terms of uh, content management framework, and, and we have much more features. We already shaped the market, because it's as soon as we got the, we, there was problems with media management. Uh, media model at this early stage was crappy. There are two models created, one by us, but one by uh, a competition, Scaldi and Assets. Well, Assets is better. <laughs> uh, but this is how, what happens. But nobody knows about Assets because we created in our, it, you, it, it's used by huge uh, French uh, media companies. Okay, but nobody in the United States knows about it. Nobody in Australia doesn't know. When somebody creates a crappy feature in Adobe, Every single salesman knows how to demonstrate it. This is a difference. We have the features. We only have to find a way to, to share our marketing resources, to have standard solutions. This is what the idea of what we really need, I think. We, we, we already do the features based off of the market because all small Drupal shops create features. We only need to share it. Thanks. So, okay. Oh, thank you. So I think uh, another very important point is that uh, many of the customers in large <coughs> newspapers enjoy the flexibility that uh, Drupal brings to the table. Unlike in Adobe, if they need to make a customization, they need to go back to Adobe. Whereas in Drupal, they are able to um, maintain an internal team that can do many of the changes that they need. And uh, agility is very important in the newspaper industry because as news comes by, they want to be able to come up with different ways of presenting the content. Yeah, and, but that, uh, that's why probably in news industry there is not so much Adobe installed. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing because it's complicated. Correct. <coughs> okay, thank you. So, well, then you can. <laughs> <laughs>